Welcome to a sneak preview of Edge of Sports Season 2 only on the Real News Network. I'm Dave Zirin. Season 2 begins August 30th at 7 p.m. That's a Wednesday. Cannot wait to show you what we got cooking. But I could not wait till August 30th to tell you some thoughts that I have about the defeat of the United States women's national team at the World Cup and why exactly the right wing is celebrating it so vociferously. And now, some choice words. Okay, look, in left politics, there is a philosophy called revolutionary defeatism. It means calling for your own country to lose when engaging in an imperialist war. Such a call, never popular, is essential towards the task of building internationalism and fighting the thirst for conquest. It's a noble call whose root lies in the desire to end human suffering. Well, in the U.S. of A. right now, we are seeing something that I think is best described as reactionary defeatism. This is the call for the United States to lose in its various rivalries with other countries, but not out of some thirst to end nationalism or war, not at all. Instead, this twisted and bizarrely fantastical view is that the United States has given too many rights to too many people, and we are now, as a result, losers. For them, this country, like Germany in the 1920s before the rise of the Nazis, represents a hedonistic hellscape, and any humiliation on the world stage is not only welcome, it is to be cheered. Reactionary defeatism was on full display when the United States women's national team was bounced from the 2023 World Cup. Their loss was surprising, but not necessarily shocking. While the U.S. was going for its unprecedented third straight World Cup, Many other countries have made giant strides in their development of women's soccer, reaching and training players beyond the middle-class pipeline that dominates in the United States. Also, our team was an uneasy mix of experience and youth, and their coach, Vlatko Andonovsky, engaged in substitution patterns best described as bewildering. So they lost. Not expected, but it happens. But in the aftermath... What has both surprised and shocked many, although this has been brewing for some time, is the utter glee with which this country's reactionary right wing has responded. They have acted like the ouster of the U.S. women was greater than if the Super Bowl was held on Christmas Day. Many commentators on the mainstream sports channels have actually struggled to explain why a section of this country, led by a vocally joyous Donald Trump, cheered their defeat. Many of the same patriotic souls who wanted Colin Kaepernick and USWNT icon Megan Rapinoe destroyed for kneeling during the anthem in 2016 loved seeing the red, white, and blue go down. Look, there is much to unpack here in this backwards exercise of reactionary defeatism beyond the obvious that politics clearly no longer stop at the water's edge. The anger, we are told by the Fox News commentators and the centrist press, is because the team is polarizing as a result of being too woke, although no one seems able to say just exactly what that means. Beneath the buzzwords, the hatred comes down to two things, both equally stupid. The first is that they can't stand Rapino and assume that the team is made up with a bunch of Rapino carbon copies, an absurd charge if you know anything about the actual human beings that played on this team. They also can't stand, although they won't say it explicitly, choosing in cowardly fashion to hide behind that word, woke, that this team organized and won equal pay. Equal pay they more than deserved by any metric. The U.S. women's national team is the most successful, popular soccer squad this country has ever produced. And at minimum, they deserved parity in their compensation. Their great sin when you dig in is that these are women who refuse to be controlled and sit in the corner. Because of that, Donald Trump, an abuser and assaulter of women, finds them intolerable. His followers are along for the ride because it valorizes their misogyny. Yet their joy at seeing the women fail also destroys a central right-wing election talking point. The GOP is openly running against transgender existence by saying that they will, quote, protect women's sports from biological males. But here they are mocking women athletes and cheering their loss. 
They have revealed themselves. They don't want to protect women's sports. They hate women's sports because if we want to get real, they hate women or at the very least women who dare not know their place. The U.S. women's national team and especially the legendary Rapino do not need the support of parasitical hypocrites who only care about women's sports if it advances their cause to eradicate trans kids. But this is what reactionary defeatism is all about. They want the United States team to lose because they want to divide and demoralize people as part of an effort to radically remake this country. They want the United States to lose because they want everything Megan Rapino, female, queer, anti-racist, pro-choice, outspoken, everything that Megan Rapino represents, they want it to wither away. But they don't realize Megan has an army, and it's an army that win or lose will not be marching backwards. Thank you so much for watching The Real News Network, where we lift up the voices, stories, and struggles that you care about most. And we need your help to keep doing this work. So please, tap your screen now, subscribe, and donate to The Real News Network. Solidarity forever.